Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Inside the Sandbox. Today we're doing something a little different. So you guys have seen a lot of our how to operate equipment videos. Well, now we really wanna show you something uh, that goes on before we get in the cab. It's our pre-op inspections. We've had a lot of people ask about that. So we brought Alex Dahl out here. He's from Road Machinery and Supply, which is our Komatsu dealer. He is a diesel uh, tech out there. And Alex has also been in several of our videos in the past with heavy equipment camp. So I asked Alex to come out. Thanks for coming out. Ain't no problem. So what we're gonna do is, you know, you know, first thing I tell you, I'm not an expert. I think most of you know that I've said that in other videos. I just kind of show you what I've learned out here. Um, but that's also why I wanted Alex here. Alex works on this equipment. So we're gonna do a kind of a typical pre-op inspection on what you should look for. Uh, this one we're doing with our excavator. So we're running, we have a Komatsu excavator here, but this will be pretty standard for any excavator that you're gonna be running. So uh, with that, I'm gonna turn over to Alex and we're gonna kind of follow Alex as he does walk around. Typically, our pre-ops go into three things I do. First is a general walk around just to catch anything visual. I kind of call it the big picture. Uh, next is my compartments, because that's where I'm actually getting, uh, checking the oil, checking the fluids, opening compartments, things like that. And then my third and final would be in the operator seat, uh, is checking inside the cab. So those are kind of the three things that we do. There is no right or wrong to this, and we welcome your guys' comments. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Alex, and let's do a walk around here. All righty, so first we're gonna start off with just your general walk around. We're gonna kind of you know, check out your undercarriage and kind of some of your features, you know, your boom and arm and bucket and whatnot. So we're going to kind of go take a look and we'll start with the tracks. First thing I kind of look for is, you know, is there any obvious damage? Is there anything completely missing? You know, is one of these track pads completely missing or, you know, bent or broken or what have you? Um, you know, and then another thing you can look for is to kind of get down and if you look underneath at your track, you know, you see this kind of this little buckle right here and this isn't too bad but there are some you know where it's it's pretty sharp and um, you know that's a sign that maybe you should have someone come out and, and measure your undercarriage or see if you know you need to possibly send it in in some downtime to get it replaced um, you know another thing to look for is like any missing steps which could be a safety hazard getting in and out you know you don't want to fall and bust your head open when you're getting in and out um, you know so that's mostly it for the tracks and then I guess another thing to check for is, you know, your sprockets right here and, you know, just make sure that they're there. There's no uh, teeth missing. You know, if they're super sharp, that's another sign you might want to consider getting them replaced or, you know, have someone come out and um, replace it for you. And then from there, we can kind of go around to the back and, you know, you take a look underneath here and see you know you got any dented panels that would you know hinder performance or operation any big leaks anywhere or anything just super obvious that doesn't seem right or you know you didn't notice the day before same thing with this side set of tracks you know check for any big buckles in it or if you know your, your sprockets broken or anything like that you know same thing as the other side just kind of a general overview nothing too crazy um, another thing i forgot to mention about the other side is you know check your track tension make sure it's not slopping all over the place and you know it's not too tight and not too loose there is you know certain specifications that you know will tell you in your um, operator's manual how tight it's supposed to be and you know if you're not sure you can call your dealer and they'll they should be able to help you figure out you know how tight it's supposed to be and um, certain ways to to measure it because it will vary from machine to machine so when we get up here i kind of take a look at the you know the whole machine take a look at your cylinders make sure they're not leaking you know a good way to tell if they're leaking is if you look right up around the cylinder right here if you see a bunch of dirt or any uh, hydraulic oil kind of leaking down or collecting up there it's probably a good sign that it's leaking maybe you want to get it replaced or have someone come out and look at it um, and then, you know, just move on down and make sure, again, nothing on your buckets, missing, broken, you know, anything kind of like that. Um, and then for the bucket itself, you know, come and, and look at the teeth. Make sure none of your teeth are broken off or there's any big chunks. You know, another good thing to look for is something like this right here where you kind of got a, a hole in your tooth right here. You know, that's getting, getting pretty low there and you might want to consider replacing all your teeth or at least maybe rotating one of them out and you know extending the life of your your teeth a little bit longer 
Um, and then, you know, from there, kind of move on back towards the cab and go up to your boom cylinders right here. Again, make sure, you know, there's no hydraulic oil or dirt collecting. Usually it'll be right up around in this area. You'll kind of see like it's, you know, dripping down or trickling down. So to get up in here, you know, just step on up and whatnot, you know, take it open and come on up in here and, you know, you got your washer fluid tank in here. Make sure that's full if it's going to be rainy, snowy, you know, whatever, muddy probably. And from there, you know, next step is to come on up here and you're going to start checking your oils and fluid levels. Good place to start is right here with your swing. You know, take your dipstick out and, and check that it's full. Um, if it's not, add the correct amount of oil to it. And then you're going to want to come over here to your engine compartment. You want to unlatch it, pull it up, make sure it locks in place so it doesn't crush you. And then, you know, just kind of do a general overview, make sure, you know, nothing's broken, missing, or out of the ordinary. And then you got your oil dipstick right here. So you go ahead, pull it out, and check your oil. Um, another good thing to do is to check your radiator cap and um, make sure that, you know, take it off and that you got coolant in your radiator. And that's that's pretty much for um, pretty much it for up here. There's not a whole lot to do. So we're gonna go over here to the first side compartment, and in here you're gonna have you know fuel filters, oil filter, your hydraulic pump, and another big thing to look for is you know make sure your filters aren't leaking or there's you know dented or cracked or what have you. Um, also with your fuel filter here. Make sure that there's no ice or water in the bottom of here. You know, if there is, just simply drain it off and get that water out of there because obviously, you know, these don't run on water. Um, and then, you know, just kind of give a, give a look over in here and make sure none of these hydraulic hoses are leaking or anything's out of the ordinary, you know, broken wires or cut uh, hydraulic hoses. And that, that's pretty, pretty much it. Now we're over by our air filter and um, radiator and air cooler. Uh, you know, go ahead and obviously make sure none of these fins are dented on your um, condenser here for your air conditioning or your air to air cooler isn't dented or cracked or anything like that. Um, you know, batteries, they're not much to them. You know, just make sure they're there, I guess. Uh, you got your coolant reservoir, make sure that that's to the full mark, you know, if it's low, um, add the correct and the correct coolant and the correct quantity to it uh, and then your air filter uh, you don't really have to take it out if you don't want to um, but you can you know clean it out blow it out from the inside out uh, with an air gun um, make sure there's no debris you know leaves or sticks or anything on your intake to your air filter and if there is obviously clean them off um, and yeah and then we're gonna move on over to the cab So the first thing you want to look for, or at least what I look for, is, you know, make sure that there's no debris or anything that's going to, you know, block any type of function or anything like that. You know, make sure, make sure you got a clean cab so everything, you can hop up in the seat and, you know, you can make sure, make sure all your functions are working, your levers move freely, nothing's stuck or feels, you know, sticky or anything like that. And same thing with your foot controls, um, you know, make sure you got your seat belt here, make sure your seat belt latches and is good. You know, you always got to wear your seat belt. Um, you know, if you want, you can turn the key on and, you know, check if your radio is working and, you know, see if you have any codes on your monitor or what, what that's saying to you, because that's another, another big thing to look for. And I think that, that pretty much wraps up checking over an excavator. Okay, so that was it. Alex did an awesome job doing a pre-op inspection on our excavator. You know, a couple things I just want to mention. Uh, obviously, your uh, OEM, whoever the manufacturer is for your equipment, there's going to be a manual in the equipment. Um, so it's always good. They're generally going to have a pre-op inspection checklist. Um, so you want to make sure you're doing uh, what the manufacturer is recommending. So, but I also, I think Alex did a great job of just, this is what we really do when we're out here. We walk around and we look for these things. A lot of these things are really obvious. Uh, just looking for obvious signs and it's not necessarily, you know, me as an operator, I'm not going to fix it. I'm actually going to call someone like Alex to come out. 
Um, but first, you just got to recognize that. So really excited to do this first one. I think Alex is going to do a lot more videos with us where we can do more of these inspections. We can ask Alex more about what goes into powering our Komatsu equipment. But I'd also love to hear from you. Uh, we've had a lot of great comments and feedback from how to operate. So please, if you're an operator, a diesel technician, whatever, comment below. What else would you like to see? What recommendations do you have? Uh, that's really amazing to see what people are inputting there and others are learning from each other. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks for Alex and Road Machinery and Supplier, Komatsu Distributor, for having them out supporting our machines. And uh, you guys have a great day.